Hey guys, welcome back for another video. All right, today I'm going to show you how to create a digital planner in Keynote using your Mac, uh, either MacBook or your iMac. Um, and the way that I do it is a little different. So let's get into it. First thing you're gonna do is go ahead and create a new document. Now I like to use just a blank white presentation. Um, you can choose any one you want to be honest. And then the first thing I do is just get rid of these um, text boxes on the page. And then you're going to want to go down to document and select your slide size. Now this is going to vary depending on what your um, what device you're making this for. Uh, this one I'm making to best match my iPad. So once you get that done, you're going to head back to format. And this is the trick. You're going to edit your master slide. Again, erase the onboard text. And now you're just going to design the main layout for your planner. So you want to include any kind of backgrounds, uh, any kind of paper choices. Now remember, you want these to be blank pages at this point. This is just your, uh, your style, not necessarily your individual pages. So I'm just creating a plain gray background with white paper on top. And one thing to keep in mind when you're creating at this point, you want to leave room for your tabs if you plan to include them. Change the color to white. Um, you can do like yellow pages at this point or really any color you want. And then I like to add a drop shadow. And then I'm going to copy and paste this page to give it like the multiple pages of a book sort of um, dimension. Just shrink these in a little bit. And then I like to bring up the opacity of the drop shadow on this page just so it's a little more obvious and stands out a little more against the page ben uh, below it. And now I'm going to create a line arrangement so it it's, doesn't look like a ring bound book. It looks just like a flat open book. So I just take this line tool and you want to make sure that the line extends only to the top and bottom of the pages. If you extend it to the top and bottom of the entire slide or of the background, then it's going to ruin the illusion because real pages don't do that. So I just double check to make sure it's touching top and bottom. And then I'm going to go over here and add another drop shadow just to give it that extra dimension. So you can see now it looks like a book that's laying open flat. So I'm going to go ahead and start creating a few tabs. Um, I like to use the rounded corners here. You can grab this little green dot right here to change the uh, the radius of the rounded corners, but I just like the look better than the, the sharp square corners, but it is totally personal preference. And same as your background, you can select any color. You can even put an image here if you wanted to, but I like to do the, uh, the drop shadow angle pointed up because as you'll see, the bottom of this tab is going to be hidden under the paper. So then I'm just duplicating command C, command V is the copy paste. And the reason I do it from right to left instead of left to right is because the topmost layer is going to be whatever you've pasted most recently. And now I'm grouping these together so that I can stretch them out a bit. And then I'm just positioning them. Okay, so you can hit the arrange button and send to back. I just did uh, command shift B and that sends it to back as well. And now I'm selecting all of these and I'm gonna copy, paste again, command C, command V, and then same thing, I'm putting it behind the top page. Now you see up here at the top, I've got that uh, line going up too far. 
So I'm going to come in here and just drop that last page down and then drop that line down. There we go. Okay, so now you're going to click done. This is your basic layout. At this point, I need to add slides, but if you hit add a slide, you can see that title and subtitle that we changed has this layout on it. So now I just made four. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste because right now I'm making the 12 months. So now I have 12 total slides. So I'm going to go back to slide one. I'm going to edit master slide again. And now I'm going to start creating my links. So you can obviously change this to be however you want it. Any font, you don't even have to use text here if you don't want to. So I'm just going to drag this up and center it. And if you are stuck with your, um, with your uh, images snapping to one area, if you hold down the command key after you click it, then it takes the snaps off so you can move them around. So right now I'm just copy pasting uh, for each month. And having the snaps on there does make it easy to get stuff centered, but every once in a while it, it does kind of decide to do something that's not how you want it, so then you would want to hold down that command key. And again, copy paste is just command C, command V. So now I'm going to select the slide, right click, go to add link, and then select slide. January is going to be slide one. Add link to slide number two for February. You're going to go one through 12. And one thing about Keynote, um, usually, you can just put your link on the slide itself. Sometimes it wants to be a pain and not recognize it through the text. So occasionally I'll add uh, a link to the word as well to the right now, it's just the initial for the month. But for stuff that's this small, you usually don't have to. But if you find that your links aren't working properly, that's likely your culprit. So the way to fix that is just to go in, highlight your text, and put your link there. The thing about this is, though, that you only have to change this once. So say you have a link that's not working on your tab, but you have like a 70 slide planner. Going in and editing this master slide, you only have to change it once, and it will change it for all the slides that you have as the, this title and subtitle master slide. All right, so we're going to hit done, come back over here, and you'll see all of these slides now have those hyperlinks. So now I'm going to go ahead and edit master again. And you can see how easy it is to go in and change the color. So watch, I'm just going to change the color of these tabs just like that. Click off of them, Let's change the background. So you can select another image or you can do a gradient, however you want to do it. And let's say that we decided we wanted to have a uh, ring bound. So I would get rid of that line and then you can go in to your finder you can go file open or you can go directly to finder. Let's go in, find where your rings are. And we'll just pick this black one here. And then when you drag and drop, you want to make sure you don't drop on top of your document or else it's going to replace something. Always go into the gray area to the side. So we're just going to shrink it to fit. And now you see how we don't have the separation in the center. I'm going to go ahead and fix that real quick. Okay. 
and then I'm going to add a shadow to these rings just to give them a little bit more realism, but I'm going to bring the opacity down so it's not so overbearing. And again, this is all just a preference thing right here. Bring these in just a little. All right, now we're going to hit done and then look, every single slide has been changed to this new design. How easy is that? So we've got 12 of them here for the 12 months, but what we need to do is we now need to make these actual calendar days. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a table here. I usually pick this one. I mean, you can adjust any of them, but this one's just the easiest for me. So I'm going to put this calendar on one page over here. And then again, this, this whole process right here is just personal preference. I'm going to make it so it's seven days per week, five weeks per month. And then I'm going to select all, all of the table, not the entire document. Then I'm going to go to border here under cell, have it outline all of them, change the color, and then make sure that this alternating row color is turned off. And now we've got a basic outline, which you can then adjust using these little squares here. And then using this circle, you can just drag this around wherever you want it to be. Now you can do a two page calendar layout, of course, but for the sake of this video, just showing you, I'm just gonna do it this way. So we're gonna change, put in January, make this a bit bigger, stick it over here. Now we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it. Now you see how I am not doing this on the master slide. Anything that's different, you don't want to put on the master slide. So names of the month, um, if you're doing a dated calendar, you don't want to include the dates on master slides because if you change something on one, it changes it on all of them. So anything that's changeable, you want to put on the individual slides, not on the master slide. And I'm just copy pasting and then double clicking to change the month. All right. So then we're just going to double check our links. March, June, November. See that? Did you see how that J was not a link? So you would want to go back in and change that. Or you can just hyperlink the name if you're using like January and it's covering the whole slide. Now we're going to go in and add a blank slide. But we're going to go into the master, select all, and copy. Because we want the same layout on the weekdays as we do the main. So we're going to go into here, edit the blank master, paste. But here we're going to delete the calendar table because this is a weekly master. So instead, we'll just go in and add some shapes for weekly planning. And again, you can decorate this part or set it up however you want to. This is just an incredibly basic way of doing it just to show you how I do it. Now you want to make sure when you're creating shapes this way that you do not include a color fill 
because when you include a fill, while it looks exactly the same, even if you do it white, it looks exactly the same. But if you're using good notes and you go to paste something into that shape, it's going to highlight it like there's an actual shape there. So in the end product, you don't want to have the filled in shapes that are white. Just have no fill with a border. Okay, you can see how that just snapped into place. So now we know that's all even, so we're going to hit done. Now we have two master slides. We have our calendar master, which is here, and then we have our weekly master, which is here. So we want to have five weeks per month. So we're just going to duplicate this, just like that, right click, duplicate. And then you want to do this I, for uh, five weeks per month, five times 12. Okay, so we're just going to go with this for now. So we're going to go into January again. This we're not going to edit on the master. We're going to add these shapes to the January slide because we want to send these to the January weeks. So I'm just going to take a shape and fill over this first week. And I like to leave a little bit of space between links so that one's not hit by accident. But you want to take away the fill, make sure there's no border, no shadow, and then right click, add a link to a slide, and this one would be slide 13 because it's the first slide after the calendar. And then you can copy this shape, paste, and then just click the link to change it to slide 14. Same thing until you have all five weeks done. So now all of January is hyperlinked. And these outlines will not show in your preview, but you can see that those are all links there. And it's going to take you to those weeks. You can go right back up to January. It'll take you right back. And then you can select another week. Super easy. And then obviously you'll want to do this with all 12 months. Um, you can go and organize them January and then week, 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 week. And then February, week, 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 week. Even after the fact, you can move stuff around and Keynote will retain the hyperlinks. They're not going to change. So if I were to put five weekly dates between January and February, I will not have to go in and change the links. Keynote will do that automatically. So there you go, guys. That is how I create planners in Keynote. Now, why do it this way? Well, if you're a shop owner like I am, you can create the same planner in a million different colors with different fonts without having to change 80, 90, 300 slides. You can change your calendar master and then your weekly master and boom, you're done. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not already. And if you have any other questions or want any other information that I can provide, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find me on Instagram at Lenny Digitals, or you can find me on Facebook in the Everyday Digital Planners Facebook group. Those, of course, will be listed down in the description box. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.